We're here with our matching folders in Scotland. So, Mind blown. Uh, and um, we've only got time to give you just a real taste of what we do, but it's called Whose Shoes, as Kel Helga has kindly said, and it gives people a taste, a tiny taste today of what we're trying to do to, to, to today, bringing real people's voices in and exploring some um, real issues. So I'm delighted to be here to, today with Ken, and um, we're going to talk about his experience of diagnosis. And I'd like you to see the film that, hey, in terms of breaking stereotypes, Ken has made himself, while the rest of us scratted around wondering what story we were telling. So I think that's <laughs> interesting in itself. Oh, that's meant to be really loud because social <laughs> media and Twitter is a big part of our story. So we're trying to bring communities together, trigger real conversations and fire people up to actually make a difference because everybody's experiences are unique. And um, the next slide shows, in terms of my personal position, I'm really passionate about dementia, and in the top right-hand corner, both of my parents-in-law um, lived with dementia, and I cared for them. But today, it's not about them, it's about Ken and Ken's story. So I'd like you to see his film. So here's Ken. Two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes. Do you want to talk through your film, Ken? Okay. 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 We need someone in a white shirt. Should we go on then, Helga? <laughs> we'll just move on then. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have the same issue with this in that we've got Ken's um, voiceover saying, there's no hope for me. When I was first diagnosed with dementia, I felt as if I'd been given a mental death sentence. And that builds on his film, that's the key message. Did it have to be so brutal? So while we're waiting for the technical people, I want you to get together with the person sitting next to you, or perhaps in threes, and you're going to have two minutes to talk about that. Does it have to be so brutal? This, this idea of you're diagnosed, and Ken's story from the film was that he was dropped off a cliff. He was told, um, we can't do anything to help you. But actually, he's re rebuilt his life in terms of um, qualitative approaches and people supporting him to have a good life. So sh should we go into the discussion, Helga? So you've got two minutes, and I'm going to stop you with a whistle to talk about that issue and make it real for you. How can this diagnosis be more gentle? I think uh, we listen to them. The technician will try to sort it out. Uh, don't uh, let Ken get nervous or anything. We have enough time. We can uh, overskip the time a little bit. So please go on with what you wanted to tell us, yeah? Simply go. Yeah, well, that's it really. This, this is what's happening. Helga, that's what happened. That's what happened. Well, I'm sorry, I have to, uh, to skip a little bit to the international rules. So, uh, she's going to follow her speech together with Ken. If the technician is able to fix the sound, it would be beautiful. If not, we try to do it for next year. So, please go on. Okay, well, you've had a little taste, I don't know. It's obviously... Um, Speak to this one. Trying to get people to see what it actually really um, feels like, and that was Ken's key message that he wanted to bring into this. And we'll move on in terms of what we're planning to do. Um, we've got the message we've just discussed, but I think 
this this picture with um, the salt cellar, okay? This was something wonderful that Ken said to me last week when we were planning what we were going to say. Jill, you passed the salt to me when I can't reach it. What did you mean by that, Ken? What I mean is good care is just enough care. It's not too much and it's not too little. It's just enough to allow you to still strive and succeed at things. What you want is a support network, not cotton wool. Of course it's common sense. It's all common sense, really. And, and we're friends, but Ken's got a wife, a loving family. Mm. I see myself as part of his support network and hopefully um, supporting yeah. in a similar kind of way. Uh, Jill is like my external hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep all of my, my relevant memories in her head, yeah. so it's fantastic. No pressure there, then. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, that's how it is, and it's seamless. And when good care takes place, it is seamless. And you may do, don't even notice it's happening. It's that good. And that's what everybody should strive for, I believe. And I think one thing, you know, we're obviously um, learning here. We know that it's different for everybody. Of course. So in, in terms of perhaps what you need, what kind of special needs, if you like, Ken, do, do you perhaps need a bit more support uh, with? Well, yeah. Our blog, perhaps? Yeah, uh, I, I like to, I've been allowed to have a voice, I would never have been able to come to a venue like this without somebody like Jill, who's going to be there to give me whatever support I need. And at the moment, it's like memorising things, asking me the right questions, so it triggers the right answers. Keeping him to time. Because <laughs> I, I, I do, I, I will waffle for hours and go completely off track. But she allows me to have this voice. And I, I work think with enables rather than allows. All right, she yeah. enables yeah. and encourages. <laughs> With a sharp stick sometimes. <laughs> but it's, it works and it's seamless. And this is what I think is so good. And I have this relationship with other people I work with. And they seem to know somehow how much is just enough. And I think it's a rare gift being able to do that. And, and I think that is what everybody who is somebody's support network needs to do. So I'm just flicking over here, just showing some um, slides which are on a timer, which unfortunately was 17 minutes each, but we managed to reduce it to 17 <laughs> seconds each. Just flicking over some of the work that we've done together in our workshops. So how have you experienced the Who Shoes workshops, Ken? I, I, I like the workshops. They're brilliant. You sit around a table. I, probably some of you have actually played the game. You sit around a table in a group, and everybody has to have a voice. Nobody can sit quietly and just passively bark there. So somebody who's probably quite quiet and very introverted will be forced to have a voice. And they probably have extremely relevant things to say that are very important, and they add to the, 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 the conversation. And through these com 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 conversations, you have amazing revelations and things that are going to help people. And it's so relaxed and so easygoing that people actually don't realise what they're doing until all of a sudden somebody will have like what we call a light bulb moment and it thinks, yeah, well, of course. And at the end of the day, it really is nearly all common sense and caring. But we, we, we don't actually think like that. So, and there's Ken, just as it happens, making his film, getting on and sitting there with his headphones making his film while I say the rest of us, including some very senior people, sat and wondered what to do. So don't underestimate. I think a lot of the work we're doing is around breaking stereotypes, but literally we just get people round the table together and if you happen to be the chief exec of the health board, but your own mother lives with dementia or your own child is disabled, you don't have to be in your roles. We kind of cut through hierarchies and just get people talking together and it's powerful. It works. So um, I don't know how we're doing for time, but um, we've involved some young people, um, sometimes some unexpected outcomes. We worked with a charity that said, well, we'd like to get our young people involved. And as a result of our workshops, they started um, volunteering to help in a day centre, um, involving the, the police and the whole community in dementia-friendly workshops. We listened to people. Oh, here's Ken on his motorbike. Tell us about your motorbike, Ken. I have a Harley. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, my, my, it's, yeah, it's my relaxation. It's my meditation. It's wonderful. It's also very slow, but that's irrelevant. 
Um, so our journey up to Scotland was interesting with me on the back of the Harley, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yes. <laughs> and all the luggage. 15 cases. <laughs> Nearly all shoes, by the way. <laughs> but, but, no, the Harley uh, was written off in an accident, and as I rebuilt my Harley, I also rebuilt myself. We all need to have projects. We all have to have to, things to do. If you don't have a task, there's no point in being. So this is vital to all of us and every one of us. And, and with the right support team, I like that word better than caregiver, if you don't mind. With the right support team, you can exceed all of your expectations. And this is vital because we can all do this. And everybody needs to do this. And with the right encouragement and help, they will do it every single time. Now, Ken, the next slide coming up, is Barry from Kent. Do you remember yeah. the guy who came to several workshops? This, this, this guy was, yeah, he was a, an awesome guy. He was trying to help his mum, who'd been diagnosed, and he really didn't know how to approach it. He had, he felt embarrassed by his mum, and he didn't know how to overcome this, and he felt ashamed because he felt embarrassed. <laughs> and after, he went to actually five sessions to try, so he was really dedicated to caring for his mum. And at the end of the sessions... With his family. Yeah, we, and he took his family as well. We sat and had a long chat, and he suddenly realised he had his own light bulb moment. She'd done nothing to warrant this. This is something that had happened to her, and it was absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. None of us do anything to warrant this. None of us have anything to be ashamed of. It's just something that happens to us. So I think that... Um previous slide there as, as hopefully you can pick up we have some fun together and I think my concept is if you can get people to relax they talk to each other as people and we we really hit some very sensitive um, difficult topics because people just relax and in, in a non-threatening kind of environment and we have a laugh the most important thing is the laughter I mean I, I, I know, I've met an awful lot of people at this conference with dementia which is absolutely fantastic and every single one of them laughs yeah. all the time you know, so we have to keep the laughter alive. Thank you, Neil. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. So we've, we've got um, decision makers um, listening to us, in particular around, I don't know whether there'll be time, um, Ken's trying to match people at the time of the diagnosis so they can actually perhaps just get to talk to somebody like Ken at that point so that they're not dropped off this cliff. Yeah, I mean, diagnosis is brutal, isn't it? It really is truly, truly awful. Yeah. And at the end of your diagnosis, you're just left. And there is no real support structure. What I want to happen for every single person who gets diagnosed, wherever they live, is that at the point of diagnosis, after you've had your seven minutes with the doctor, rather than being said, goodbye, we'll see you in 12 months, he says, well, actually, we've got somebody sitting next door who's living with this condition, do you want to have a chat with them? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know, wouldn't that be marvellous? Yeah. And then you go and sit and you have a cup of tea with this person and you see that they're really normal, you know? And they go shopping. Yeah. They go playing with the kids. They go on holiday. And maybe even like me, they still drive. Yeah. And in every single way, they are a normal person. They just have this problem. And this is what I want to happen to everybody. I, and I really believe that... We should all get together to make this happen because it changed these people's lives. It could give people 10 years back yeah. what they otherwise lose. So we've made a pretty ambitious NHS change day pledge. And I say to, uh, to um, Ken, hey, do you fancy coming to make a Google Hangout? And what happened? We made one. <laughs> she like encourages a live me. Like we webinar and things. Yeah. Like. I, uh, I, I just get sort of led places and plonk down and she says, Go. I think she just winds me up and turns me on. And <laughs> don't quote that one. No, don't, please. <laughs> so um, we've got at the end a wonderful message. Um, now, again, it's, it's without the sound, unfortunately, but I've been so fortunate to um, work and be supported by Helga and I've got this powerful message read by Helga. We are the experts. We're the only ones who can tell you what it feels like when the pictures of our lives fade when the memory slips away. And people hear that voice booming into the room and it feels to me as if I'm bringing Helga to our workshops.